so with that I'll hand it over to our resident expert on this topic Mike Thompson he's been re reading yeah. the governor's order um, since it came out last week and uh, it was really instrumental in putting together these slides so I'll turn it over to you Mike I don't know if I agree with that but I thank you anyway Anthony uh, so I think the first thing businesses want to do with regard to this new supplemental paid sick leave is establish whether or not you're covered under the under the order uh, under governor Newsom's order and it the order defines it as hiring entities and that's the term that it uses and those are businesses with 500 or more employees in the u.s and for terms for purposes of counting uh whether you meet that 500 employee threshold uh you know you count full-time employees you count part-time employees you don't count independent contractors although they may still get a benefit they still may be entitled to leave under this but for purposes of whether you're qualified in a hiring entity, you don't count independent contractors. You do count any employee who's on any kind of, of leave, you know, such as FMLA, um, you know, pregnancy leave or anything like that. You do, you do not have to count uh, furloughed employees or laid off employees, but if you bring them back, when you bring them back, then they would count and they could put you above the 500 limit. So once you've established whether or not you're a hiring entity, uh, and if you go to the next slide, the next step would be what workers are covered under under the paid sick leave uh, provision. Okay, so one of so the one of the criteria that you can qualify is if is if your employee meets one of the specified wage orders, which are uh, wage orders three, eight, thirteen, and fourteen, and that's canning, freezing, and preserving. Uh, you know, industries that handle products after harvest and then agricultural occupations. The, the second uh, criteria of food workers uh, would be for businesses that operate a food facility. So the food, food facilities are uh, defined under the health and safety code as an operation that stores, prepares, packages, serves, vends, or otherwise provides food to, for human consumption at the retail level. And that can be on or off premises. And the, the labor commissioner has, has indicated that that would include grocery stores, restaurants, uh, I would include warehouses that store food, uh, cafeterias, and and various other businesses that meet that 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 definition as a food facility. Yeah, Mike, I wanted to interrupt on that too. You know. It, yeah. When we were looking at this executive order, um, you and I were commenting it was really kind of under the radar. We didn't see a lot of commentary about it. And w there was um, some questions on how broad and, you know, this health and safety code sections a little vague. Those wage orders appear to apply only to the ag industry. Um, so there was some questions on, you know, who does this cover? And um, I mean, do you think it's uh, surprising a lot of people that this is applying to, you know, grocery stores and restaurants that they're considered, you know, uh, under this under this law? Yeah, I do think it is kind of under the radar. I think probably a lot of people saw this the wage orders and thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm wage order five or I'm wage order seven, so it must not apply to me. And I think my guess as to what the thinking is is they wanted to target restaurants but you know frequently restaurants are in the same wage order as you know hotels and, and some other businesses that perhaps they didn't want to have applied to this to this order so i think that's kind of why they set it up this way where there's four wage orders that it applies to broadly but then they use these alternative definitions such as if you operate a food facility so that they could specifically target the food service worker industries that they that they intended to cover by the executive order. But I agree that it that it hasn't been getting a lot of as much attention as I think it should be, and that's yeah. kind of my guess as to why. Yeah. Now I brought up the next slide about the um, okay. the who delivers food from a food facility, and this is a little strange too that the governor's executive order would apply to the ag workers, restaurants, and then. Uh, come in and, and rope the independent uh, delivery services into this as well. Yeah, and um, so that, you know, thanks, thanks for that. As the third group is those who workers who deliver food from a food facility, and it you know the order specifically says that delivery network companies, which would be um, 
anyone who uses a mobile app to deliver food, such as you know a Postmates or something like that. And then a transportation network company, which you, know, you tend to think of Uber and Lyft and organizations like that that use apps to connect passengers with drivers. Those entities are specifically listed as hiring entities under the executive order. And so if a worker is delivering food from a restaurant through one of those those organizations or through an app like that, uh, I think the executive order is intended to cover those individuals. Uh, now, the key is it's, it's not necessarily the food facility that you're delivering from. It, the question is, is the hiring entity qualified? And then are you delivering from a, a food facility?